So today we're looking at Frank Grinold, which is another Echeveria. It's really well known. And James, tell us all about it. Okay, Frank Grinold. It's an American hybrid by a guy called Frank Renault. It comes from California. Now, this is an early hybrid. It'd have to be one of the earlier ones. It's really, it's Agavoides prolifera cross Echeveria colorata. And that's enhanced the pink. It's much pinker than anything you'll see in the wild. Now, Echeveria Agavoides grows over a vast area of Mexico and it's quite variable. So you go from everything from ebony types through to Echeveria prolifera, which is a more red version from a particular one. And it's like different valleys have different styles that have evolved over the years. So this is, um, a, a lot of people will know Echeveria colorata and they know it has beautiful red tips on it. So maybe they're packed in the red on this one. So this is the plant as you'd buy it in the nursery. How are we going to pot it up, James? Easily done. First of all, I'll choose a pot like similar, not same colour necessarily, but something that might enhance the colours a little bit. You know, so the maroon here, this will touch it up, I think lift it a little bit. So we've, we've got a, a special little bit of mesh to go over the hole just yep. to stop the soil yeah. from falling through? We just buy it bulk and cut, out, cut them out. You cover your hole and let's just put a bit of soil in there to start her off. That'll hold that mesh in place. So we're using a really free draining mix for that and yeah. we'll have that recipe in yeah. the video or in the notes below the video. It is free draining. Look there's a bit of perlite pumice scoria and really we use about 50 to 60 percent of this soil mix here which is a, just a normal growing mix for our smaller plants. We add 30 to 40 percent of this of pumice scoria and perlite and a bit of extra sand. That's all we do. Now in this one here, what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of fertilizer, not a lot. And again, we have some slow release. Yep, a little bit of lime. Yep, this is dolomite lime and a bit of soft nitrogen, which will give it, give it a bit of a kick for a while. So what's soft nitrogen? It's just a, a soft, highly soluble nitrogen. It's like a short term, slow release fertilizer we use it to give a bit of a kick to the plants okay when we're growing them now give the planter here a bit of a squeeze and you see see i've been using that's the fertilizer in there yep from before you can see new white roots pretty healthy all right so what we do we take a bit of that soil off always remove any old leaves underneath or damaged leaves okay you just want clean clean a clean neat plant to go in there now look, I like to use my hands. Some people like scoops. But in a pot, sometimes a scoop is a bit better. Because I've got big hands. Now the main thing is hold it in the centre. And you still wriggle around and move it a little bit here. And then you just support the plant and you tuck it in around the edges. Now this is a tall pot. I sometimes like tall pots because they actually show the plant off a little bit more. And I'll, actually, John, at the end of this one, I am going to show you a bowl. I've got a bowl of Frank Reynolds up there. That's pretty good. Now this one here, you'll see it's a bit loose on top. And the main idea is I really like to lift these plants up above the soil line. And the reason I've gone low on the soil here is this will fill up with water. And I finally fill it with gravel nearly to the top. Now there's heaps of colour gravels you can use as well, aren't there? Oh, heaps, many of them. But I, I sort of quite like the white one or the golden one I like sometimes too. But you buy multicoloured stuff, any any amount of gravels. We'd have about 10 or 12 different gravels here. Depends a bit on the pot and the plant. Yeah, and you, you want to get it to match or enhance it or display it, is what you're really doing. So I'd, I'd call that potted. Now having this depth of sand in here, that allows the water to soak in right through it gravel dries out much quicker than soil and this will keep the lower leaves dry and sort of ventilated with air so as the year goes on you'll end up with one of these older leaves here will dry out take remove them you know by going around like that and taking them off and that'll clean up your plant and just keep it clean 
So after we've just potted that up, are we going to water that in? No, I'd like to leave it for about a week. Okay. About a week. And look, it just needs time to settle in. It'll start to develop some new pink roots. Because if you've got damaged root systems on your plant, you could start a rot. So it's better to let them heal over. You can see this mix is quite dry. It's just a little bit moist, but not much. So it's actually what I call a dryish mix. So, and, and then when you do water it, water it from above or below? Oh, this one I'd water from above, but you can water below. Like if you have some plants are really fussy and they don't like too much water on top. So you, you've got to get these dry. You remember, they really grow in the desert. But what you do, because of the big hole underneath, you can put this in a bucket of water up to about here, let it soak for a few minutes, and that'll bring the water level right up to about here, and all your leaves stay dry. And then let it drain. Yep, and that's the idea of these special pots. And also you see it's got feet, ventilation under here. It helps them dry out. And no mist spraying? No, I, never, never. Freak Renault does have a few relatives. Um, they're very fine variations, but you can actually see it when you actually do leaf propagation or things like that. Now, and I will talk about propagation in a minute for these, but curved in leaf, still a bit green oh, i forgot to mention before in springtime these actually go quite golden with sort of red tips on them so they really change color through the year this is the prime time of year for these they turn hot red now back to its relatives we've got here ladies choice now this is a darker red a darker richer red i believe this was probably an early brother of frank renault or you know selection a seed selection from a similar grouping of this and this is a really unusual plant not many people have it but a much redder version of Frank Renault and you can sort of see this leaf shape is a little bit different maybe a little more upright and we have another one here MS Diana now this one's a bit more like Frank Renault but its leaves actually go more an orangey color later on and you can see also compared to here a bit fatter a bit shorter this is quite an old plant, this one. So is it a bit tighter than Frank Renault as well? I reckon it is a bit. It's a bit more closed up. And this is where the, you get the variation with different seedlings. And that's what comes about when you're making your hybrids. You do really good selections. And like both of these are a bit distinctive. But really, for, for the average person, it's really splitting hairs. It, it's very fine variations. So any of the Frank Renaults are just great plants. Oh, beautiful. Look at them in winter. Like it's just coming into winter now. They stay red, bright red for months. They're absolutely stunning. Now that we're talking about Argavoides, well, this is another new hybrid. This is a really unusual variegation. Now we've got two types of this one. This is the more yellow version and the one with more red. It's sort of a variegation that happens on the end of the leaf. And I've only ever seen this on a couple of plants before, but this is a reasonably new hybrid again from a friend overseas that we've bought in and uh, I'm hoping we have a few of these in spring and summer this coming year we've done a fair bit of propagation of them so it's really quite stunning and you see it's quite green with a bright red -y sort of orange tip in summer this one's quite golden tips with a little bit of red point on here and the other one's really bright red has this one got a name yet no it hasn't got a name, so no. if you want to find out about this one, you'll have to subscribe to the mailing list, won't you? Yep, you'll get a name soon. There's more information and links to a whole range of resources in the notes below the video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on a whole range of succulents and indeed a whole range of garden plants. And as always, good luck with your gardening.